Welcome back, trainers and dungeon masters. Your adventure continues deeper into the Kanto region. In the last video, you fought a big bug dungeon and battled a beast in the sky. In this video, we will be covering a big chunk of two-stage evolution Pokemon. Covering Pokemon 19, 21, 23, the mascot Pokemon, and ending on Pokemon 28. So let's dive straight into the iconic staple in most fantasy games, the giant rat. And in Pokemon, it's Ratatata and Raticate. Taking inspiration from the giant rat in Dungeons and Dragons, these two Pokemon will both be small beasts. Ratatata will get an AC of 12, HP of 7, or 2d6, and a speed of 25. Raticate will get an AC of 14, HP of 71, or 13d6 plus 25, and its speed stays 25. For the stat breakdown, Ratatata will get a total of 49, with 7 in strength, 15 in dexterity, 11 in constitution, 2 in intelligence, 10 in wisdom, and 4 in Charisma. Raticate's stat total is increased to 63, with Strength getting a major jump up to 16, Dex staying at 15, 12 in Constitution, 4 in Intelligence, 10 in Wisdom, and 6 in Charisma. Both of them getting a Dark Vision of 60 and a Passive Perception of 10 and 12, respectively. Both get the Giant Rat features Keen Smell, where they get the advantage on Perception checks relating to Smell, and Pack Tactics, where they get advantage on a attack rolls if one of their allies are nearby. Finishing off these mons, they both get one action, that being a bite. Ratatata gets a plus 2 to hit and will deal 1d4 plus 2 piercing damage. Raticate's bite is a plus 3 to hit and will deal 4d6 plus 3 piercing damage. Maybe with these stats, Raticate will make it off the SSN this time. With our second bird Pokemon of the region, Spearow will be the counterpart to Pidgey, being a tiny beast with an AC of 13, HP of 30, or 64 plus 15, with a speed of 20 and a matching flying speed. A stat total of 59, with 10 in strength, 15 in dexterity, 9 in constitution, 5 in intelligence, 12 in wisdom, and 8 in charisma. It has a passive perception of 12. For its attacks, it's an aggressive bird, so it will have a multi-attack, allowing it to make 3 peck attacks that deal 1d4 plus 2 damage. When it evolves into Firo, its AC becomes 14, HP becomes 110, or 20d6 plus 40. Its walking speed stays 20, but its flying speed doubles, becoming 40. Its passive perception gets bumped up to 16. For attacks, it keeps its multi-attack of 3 peck attacks, but the damage gets increased to 11, or 3d4 plus 3. With the second bird of the region, I tried to make it feel a little different. I made this bird very aggressive, but it can't compete with the king of the sky. Going forward, we are going to create some key Pokemon from the anime. With Ekans and Arbok, I just wanted to rework the poisonous steak and the giant poisonous steak. But, when I looked at their Pokemon entries, God, ah! these guys are massive. So, Ekans will be a rework of the giant poisonous snake, and Arbok will be our own creation. For Ekans, it gets an AC of 14, HP of 18, or 5d8 plus 5, a speed of 30, and an equivalent swim speed. Its stat total is 56, with 10 in strength, 10 in dexterity, 13 in constitution, 2 in intelligence, 10 in wisdom, and 3 in charisma. It has a damage resistance to poison and two senses, blind sight of 10 feet, and a passive perception of 12. A perception skill of plus two, and the wrap ability from the giant snake, allowing Ekans to make a grapple check against a creature. If the creature being wrapped by Ekans fails, then Ekans gets advantage on attack rolls against that creature. For actions, it can make one bite attack that deals six or 1d4 plus four piercing damage, and another 3d6 poison damage on a failed constitution save. When it evolves into Arbok, it has an AC of 15, HP of 70, or 10d10 plus 15, and its speed gets increased to 35. Its stat total is now 63, with 14 in strength, 18 in dexterity, 14 in constitution, 2 in intelligence, 11 in wisdom, and 4 in charisma. The damage resistance is now immune, and its blind sight and passive perception get increased to 15 feet, and the passive perception becomes 14. It keeps the wrap ability, but we are increasing the strength save to 14. It will get a completely new homebrewed ability as well, that I'm calling Superior Hunter. Arbok can adapt to its surrounding and its prey, being able to make its poison simulate different elemental damage. Arbok can choose for its poison to deal poison, lightning, 
fire, or cold damage. This ability is to simulate all the different fang moves Arbok gets at level 1. And finally, its action is a bite that deals 9 or 2d4 plus 4 piercing damage and an additional 14 or 3d8 elemental damage. Who else is there to be Ekans and Arbok from Team Rocket than beloved Pikachu? This electric mon is going to be a glass cannon with an AC of 11, HP of 19, or 4d6 plus 5, and to simulate its quick movements, we are going to give it a speed of 40. Its stat total will be 66, breaking it up into 12 in strength, 18 in dexterity, 8 in constitution, 5 in intelligence, 10 in wisdom, and 13 in charisma. It has a damage resistance to lightning and a passive perception of 12. For its ability, it gets innate spellcasting three times a day, with its dexterity as its spellcasting modifier. It can cast Shocking Grasp or the lightning version of Chromatic Orb without any components. And lastly, its action is Iron Tail, which is a melee weapon attack that deals 15 or 4d4 plus 5 bludgeoning damage. When we meet Lieutenant Surge, we have to face off against its Raichu. This Raichu will pack a punch. It will have an AC of 13, HP of 36, or 8d6 plus 8, and its speed will stay 40. Its stat total will get increased to 73, with 15 in strength, 18 in dexterity, 10 in constitution, 5 in intelligence, 10 in wisdom, and 15 in charisma. It keeps its damage resistance and its passive perception gets increased to 13. Its innate spell casting gets increased to 5 times a day and it is now able to cast its signature lightning bolt and its iron tail damage is increased to 24 or 4d6 plus 10. I like the look of these mascots. I think I did my boy Raichu justice for always being in the shadow. Moving on to our final Pokemon of the video, probably one of my personal favorites from the Gen 1 games, Sand Shrew and Sand Slash. These two have some very cool abilities to make for an interesting combat in D&D. Sand Shrew will have an AC of 14, HP of 32, or 76 plus 8, and a speed of 25, along with a 25 foot burrow speed. Its stat total will be 56 with 13 in strength, 8 in dexterity, 15 in constitution, 4 in intelligence, 6 in wisdom, and 10 in charisma. It gets a dark vision of 45 because it can burrow and a passive perception of 11. For abilities, it gets defense curl. Similar to the turtle's ability, it can curl up into a ball, increasing its AC to 19, but it is unable to move or attack in this form, and it is able to open back up as a bonus action. It also gets the dig ability, allowing it to go underground and make a stealth check. When it exits, it's the ground, it will gain advantage on its next attack. For actions, it gets two, a scratch that deals 1d6 plus two slashing damage, and rollout, which allows him to roll in a 20 foot line, and any creature in that line must make a DC 15 deck save, or take nine or 2d8 bludgeoning damage. Its evolution gets an AC of 15, HP of 50, or 10d6 plus 15, and its speed gets increased to 30. Its stat total becomes 65, with 15 in strength, 8 in dexterity, 18 in constitution, 4 in intelligence, 8 in wisdom, and 12 in charisma. Its dark vision is now 60 feet, and it has a passive perception of 13. The defense curl ability works the same, but its AC is now 20 when it curls up. The dig ability stays the same, but it will get one more, that being spiked shell. If a creature hits sand slash with an unarmed attack, or a grapple, they will take 1d4 damage. For actions, it will get a multi-attack, allowing it to make two slash attacks that deal 10, or 2d6 plus 4 slashing damage. Damage. And its rollout ability works the same, but it will take an additional 5 or 1d10 piercing damage from the spikes on its shell. These two are super cool, but these two are just the guardians before we enter a cave filled with Pokemon that evolve from the Moonstone in the next video.